Okay, is anyone else getting super sick of these price increases? But seriously though, it seems like every month or every couple of weeks, we turn around and another design house is having a price increase. I don't know about you, but I'm feeling a little priced out of the market at this point. <laughs> so today we're gonna be looking at an article that the Purse Blog dropped on June 9th, and it's titled, Will Luxury Brands Ever Lower Their Prices? Kind of wishful thinking, I think. <laughs> but before we dive into this article, hey guys, my name's Caleb. I post luxury and lifestyle related content every Wednesday, Friday, and Sunday. Make sure you don't miss out on anything. So hit that subscribe button down below. Give this video a thumbs up. Say hi down in the comments. Let me know, like, are you sick of price increases? Are you buying more pre-owned because of them? Or not buying at all? Because as we all know, as the prices go up in the, the, the new market, Pre-love prices are, are gonna even out, which is kind of a shame because you used to get some good deals. We are no strangers to the ever-increasing prices of these beautiful things we love to buy, and it is driving me a little crazy. I used to work for Coach, which isn't quite this level. However, working at Coach, we learned that the most popular handbag at the time cost the company a whopping $34 to produce in full calfskin leather. Now that same handbag was originally sold for an MSRP of about 400 plus. So I can only imagine now, yes, something like this takes a little bit more time. It's artisan made, handmade, yada, yada. It's not gonna cost them 10K to make. Anyway, so according to this article, they, they pointed out that in 2016, Chanel Classic flat bag sold for Hold on to your chairs. For those of you who remember, I'm sorry to cut you again, this is terrible. The medium classic flat bag sold for 4,900 back in 2016. That same bag, you'd be looking at about 10,200. And listen guys, unless you, you've been living under a rock or you're not aware, we have been seeing a lot of quality problems coming from the house of Chanel. Like we were, were questioning, are things even made out of full leather anymore? Allegedly. We had the Chanel 22, we, we've seen hardware falling off, jewels missing from jewelry on their website. Like it's a, it's a problem for the house of Chanel. And you cannot tell me that in six years, the cost of caviar leather has gone up six grand. I don't believe it, I refuse to believe it. Anyway, so this article goes on to point out that brands like Chanel and Hermes aren't the only ones that are doing this. No, no, no. Which of course, like you and I already know, like we're smart, we're savvy shoppers, we know this. However, I wanna point out that at the end of 2022, even Gucci, who no one seems to point out their price increases, by the way, BTW, underline that, raised their handbag prices by nearly nine percent. Thank goodness I picked this up in Spain when I did because an additional 9% on an already kind of pricey handbag, that's a big ask. For what is it, for a $1,000 handbag, that's $90, 9%? <laughs> nah, not my strong suit. Go with it though. In addition to Gucci, several other houses hiked up their prices. You saw 4 to 8% at Celine, nearly 10% plus at Louis Vuitton, and Prada, 3 to 8%. I, I don't know about you, but the majority of these houses, I think, are seeing some quality issues because it's all about supply and demand. Yes, they're trying to create this air of exclusivity and, and you can't have this and, and aspiration and yada yada, but they're also trying to churn out for all of these markets and boutiques across the, the globe and they can't keep up to the price, the supply, the demand, and the quality. Like It's kind of like that like triangle graph. Like You can have two, but you can't have all three. That's what we're seeing here, I think, with the price increases. Now, this article also goes on to talk about Tesla, which is kind of left field, I guess. I mean, <laughs> but they talk about how the brand actually announced price cuts across their, their model lineup, if you will. Uh, but I mean, you have to take that with a grain of salt. Teslas aren't really, and I'm sorry if you own a Tesla, this is no shade, no shame. Maybe your model doesn't have these problems, but we don't, we, we don't know Tesla for their quality. You have a lot of panel gaps, a lot of like missing trim, like chunky plastic trim, mechanical issues. There's a whole lot of problems with Teslas. Also, I don't think they've had a new model come out in several years or a redesign for the Tesla Type S or the three, like the, the lineup is looking stale, if you will. So no wonder they would cut prices when, when other brands are coming out with beautiful electric vehicles. Looking at you, BMW, Volvo, call me. My, my email's down in the description if you want a brand ambassador. I don't think that we're gonna see that in the handbag world anytime soon. I think that there would have to be something very drastic. I think the handbag bubble would really have to pop for us to see a price decrease. Now listen, my husband and I were very comfortably middle class. I used to I used to really enjoy going to the boutique, buying the brand new bag, having the champagne, the espresso, the experience. But at what point is that 
worth it to me anymore. You know what I mean? So we're seeing these exorbitant price increases. We're, we're seeing lessening quality. Half the time you can't even get the bag you want. Like I walked into Hermes and got laughed at for asking to see a wallet. Check out that vlog link in the description. So like, like why, would, why would I pony up these big prices to just get less in return? if you know what I mean. And I can't be the only one feeling that way, right? I, I've been, you know, looking more pre-owned lately, Fashion File, Rebag, Yugi's Closet, just kind of like reevaluating like what, what's important to me. When I buy a bag, I still wanna be able to put some money into it. I mean, whether that's on my card or in cash, you know what I mean. And according to this article, I'm not alone in feeling this customer fatigue. And when you're discussing like the price lists, it, they say it invariably leads to talks about the secondhand market. They go on to explain that there's the stigma around the pre-owned market, that, that people are really just selling their stuff to get rid of it, not to make a profit. But to that end, the new bags are so expensive these days that more people are paying attention to the vintage market where they're more likely to be able to afford, in, in their words, their dream clutch, which is so true. You can get some really good deals in the secondhand market still. Like, yes, they're a lot higher than what we saw two, three years ago, but they're nowhere near, in, in most cases, what the primary market is, is demanding, which is exorbitant in some instances. And he also goes on to state, the, the person that they're interviewing, that secondhand products have increased in popularity in many countries because you have to think you have the Western world, the Eastern world, like everyone's buying these luxury goods now across the globe. So there's gonna be an increased demand and with an increased demand becomes scarcity and higher prices. Supply and demand, learn that in business class. <laughs> there are more buyers now and there is more demand. So the sellers may start raising their prices, which we have seen. It's no secret. A lot of the times, like we're seeing higher prices on bags than we saw in years past, but the potential trend will not necessarily affect her buying habits. So then the final point that they make in this article, which again, like I didn't love this article, a lot of highs, lows, and then a random Tesla reference, the aspirational effect. And that is so true. Like when, when you think of yourself, especially with brand marketing and everything, like you want to imagine your life with these products and how much improved it's going to be like, oh, I'll finally like drink more water and read before I go to bed. Those kind of things like have this like beautiful glamorous lifestyle. Having 90 handbags in my closet, I can attest to the fact that your life doesn't change. You just have more bags to pick from. <laughs> insider secret. Now, when it comes to the aspirational effect, which, which trust me, even, even I'm plagued by it. I'm not going to lie. Like I just share with you, like my insider secret, I'm still affected by the aspirational effect. Like 100%. I want to leave you with this last quote from the article. If paying 8% more on a Louis Vuitton tote will make you us feel better about ourselves, should we even be thinking about that price hike? The emotional value of being the owner of the bag will in some way completely erase its higher ticket price. Talk about sipping on some corporate Kool-Aid and trying to justify price increases. Anyway, guys, I don't know. What do you think? Like, are we are we gonna keep seeing these higher prices? Are, are you done paying these higher prices? I mean, I, we're kind of at the point, it's a little crazy. Not gonna lie, like I, I I don't really see the value in continuing to pay exorbitant prices for lesser quality. I keep saying that, but that, that's just like the main argument of this video is like, why are we paying more and getting less and getting laughed at in some cases? Just doesn't make sense. Anyway, guys, do you, let me down in the comments. Are you buying pre-owned? Are you buying new? Do you even care? Like we're pretty used to price increases. To that end, I remember when I first started buying this stuff. My Louis Vuitton Speedy 40 at the time was like $635. It was increased to $650 by the time I made it into the store to buy it. Back then, like a $20 increase, everyone on the purse forum would be like all up in arms about $20. I'd love to know what they're saying about 8, 9, 10%. That is absolutely insane. Anyway, by the time the Speedy 40 was finally discontinued and pulled off the website, I think it was almost $1,500. But now that I'm thinking about it, they did add that zipper to the interior pocket. So that's definitely worth 800 bucks. Thank you for joining me today. I hope you had fun. I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye-bye.